What up squad, welcome to episode 15 of the vlog. My brother and I just got done a little grippy workout, uh, looking at some deadlifts, uh, kettlebell swings, and some double unders. So it was nine rounds, one heavy deadlift, 20 kettlebell swings overhead, so the American style, uh, and then 30 double unders. So one jump, two turns of the rope, and we did that for nine rounds. Uh, we were shooting for about 13, 14 minutes. Uh, both of us ended up just over 14 minutes. What we try to do for this workout is really pace things out and kind of think about how long a round should take in our minds. So I was thinking between a minute 30 to a minute 45, you multiply that out by nine, and that gives you somewhere in the 12 to 15 minute range. So we're shooting for that gap right there. And then we're selecting the according weights for the kettlebell and the deadlift. And then of course, scaling our jump rope abilities. If you can't do double unders, um, double the number of repetitions and do 60 singles instead of 30 doubles. Um, so you're equaling the same amount of work. So thank you guys for tuning in again. Um, I'm taking a little bit of your Saturday day to catch up with me. But do you guys think you can beat Kansas City? Oh, we for sure can. Like they didn't play us. They played us when we were like, when that, like they played us in the one of two losses in the regular season. When we hadn't figured ourselves out. When we hadn't gone out and got a couple people. Correct. Like we hadn't had Marcus Peters yet and stuff like that. But no, you can't tell me for soccer, dude. The defense does not get like crapped on. Oh, if we lose a game. And when the goalie makes like 90 consecutive yeah. saves and they let the one durable. What? That was never the case for my team. But like when the offense doesn't score, it's like, oh, guys, we had a bad day. But when the defense like gets no, crapped on. Really True. But if the defense lets that one goal in, if you ever watch film or tape, it's the offensive guys on soccer that lose the ball, don't track back, and they're like, oh, the center back's got it. And then the oh, center backs get screwed. You know how I know? Because I played the position. Dude, my spiral team too. You know what you did? You probably sat there like, oh, guys, give the ball defense. I was a striker. Yes, your job. Well, you my just... job. And I did my job. I scored just about like, every game. You scored like seven goals. That's every other game. Just about oh, you said every other game. I was like, you did not score every game. That's important. That is very important. That's essential. Fun. So now I'm going to take you guys a little bit through my normal programming routine. So I get been, I've been getting lots of questions about um, what do I program? How do I program? Where do I get my programming from? And the answer is I program a lot of my own workouts myself. Um, and this is based off of my own personal needs. Um, so for me, I know that heavy barbell to moderate weight is one of my challenges. So I've been getting my strength up. It's kind of difficult without a squat rack, but it's something I've been working around. Also too, we've been focusing in on getting the correct number or finding the right volume in a week. So I'm not feeling super overloaded, but at the same token, I'm getting in nice rest intervals and I'm getting good solid training sessions every single time. Um, so it's been fun to play around with some numbers, learn a little bit about my body. And I'm taking the same thing and same plan of action for my do more programming platform, which is on Instagram. It's do underscore more underscore programming, uh, which is a free platform for you guys to get daily workouts and daily wads. Um, and there is going to be a new wad every day. And of course, I am adjusting with the COVID-19 pandemic. So you can do a lot of these at home or with minimal equipment. And there'll be scaling options and modifications for each one. Back to the programming. I'm going to take you guys and show you a little bit of what I do, the method to the madness, how I plan out workouts. Um, and also some of my inspirations um, who have inspired me to do the do more programming. So take a look at my computer screen. This is my Google calendar platform. And so we're going to look here at Saturday, for example, and we're going to look at some wads. So actually did not do this workout at seven 30. This workout was done around four 45. Yes, that is okay. Um, and if I click on each yellow block, it's going to pull up the workout that it is. So if you look here, this is a teams of three Murph practice run. It gives all the details, um, about the workout itself, the duration, um, and specifically what each partner is going to be doing. So then now if you look at the second workout, again, it's programmed already in here and I hit the edit button and in here and change some things. So instead of hang cleans, I actually did, um, 20 kettlebell swings. Type this with one hand. Boom. So got that typed in and I'm gonna hit save. So now it's saved on my computer 
and it's also gonna be saved on my phone and my iPad. So whenever I need to pull up the workouts, I just click on them and they pop up. So again, now if you look at this wad, it is all fixed up at one deadlift, 20 kettlebell swings and 30 dubs. And so now going through programming, specifically like what I want to program. So within a week, um, it, it goes like this. So it goes, I, I work out Monday through Wednesday. Thursday is an active recovery day. Um, I think it provides me the benefit of going three days really hard, rest one, go hard for two days, and then recoup again on that Sunday. Uh, I think it's a good split of going five really hard days and two active recovery days. It's just what's working for me right now. I might bump it to six and one. Um, but I think five and two right now is a happy medium of good workload, good volume, and getting everything I really need. And so typically that first work back, workout back on Monday, and this is going to take you guys a little bit through my mindset of programming um, and understanding a little bit of my methodology. So taking a look at each day. So Monday typically is a little lighter um, in the morning session, particularly it's more body weight, more cardio based, nothing super intensive, really trying to wake the body back up from its Sunday rest day. And then the afternoon sessions and the evening sessions on Monday is where I go into heavy barbell or the strength portion. Um, and it's a lot more intensive workouts, um, typically more of an AMRAP style or something for time. Um, and then Tuesday is typically one of my weakness days. So last week was pistol squats. Um, something I'm trying to work on getting a rhythm for Wednesday, uh, either again, another strength day or some he heavy barbell cycling. It's probably my, one of my two biggest things I need to work on is my simply just pure raw strength and then ability to cycle moderate barbell weight. And then Thursday active recovery day typically is very light or it's cardio, um, nothing intensive, not going for time, not going for performance, just complete maintenance. And then Friday and Saturday, just send everything I got left in my body and then Sunday rest and I do it all again. Um, and with this too, in my calendar on Google calendar, I use my Gmail account, none of my diet or anything's in here. It's simply, this is strictly just for like what's in a work day for schoolwork and workouts itself and planning and moving pieces around and being very flexible. Um, so that's kind of the main gist of my programming. So I'm going to take you guys through constructing and building for next week because I typically do my programming about seven to 10 days in advance. So I'm going to do the whole next week. Today is the 18th. Um, so starting with the 19th all the way to the 25th, I'm going to take you guys through and walk through all that. And so before I get into the whole scheme and the whole week of how I program and what's going through my mind, I want to talk a little bit about the active recovery day, so starting off with Sunday. So for example, last week, ton of gymnastics work, a lot of stress on the shoulders. Um, I did a lot of front squatting, so the quads are going to be a little tight. So programming and thinking about what I need, quads. So what I have is some scap pull-ups. So hanging from the bar and just use my scaps um, is going to be helping out with some accessory work, strengthening some smaller muscles that I might not hit throughout the week normally. Um, we also have the external rotation and the internal rotation um, with some stretchier latex bands. Um, they're, again, working accessory muscles in my shoulder, strengthening those guys up so they hold tight and reducing injury, reducing inflammation, and pushing out any bad toxins or gunk that should not be in there. Um, and then we're going to go into a little bit of a cardio piece. So it's going to be an on-off row bike. Um, so it's going to start with 200 meter row, 15 cal bike. Then you're going to double it to 400 meter row, um, 30 cal bike. And then you up it by 200. So it's 600 meter row, 45 cal bike. Um, that's just going to be nice to get the body moving. Not really doing it for time. Just getting the body going getting nice and warm. And then we're going to go into some more deep tissue work with a barbell. And I'll go into more detail about this tomorrow. I want to show you guys a full on recovery day of eating and stretching mobility, but that's where I sit the barbell on my traps. And there's a release points that I've learned from a wonderful massage therapist whose link I will put in the descriptions um, below, either for this video or the next. Um, and then there's some other release work for my back, specifically my scaps in the back. So my traps here, my scaps in the back. Um, and then I'm going to go through some quad release again with the barbell. So it's gonna be some fun, some painful stuff but necessary stuff to work out knots of certain muscle groups. And then after that, it's probably gonna be some dislocates, taking a PVC pipe, again, working on the shoulder, working on trunk flexibility and mobility. Um, so let's get into it. So 
So taking a look at Monday's workouts, if we took it the first one, again, body weight based, very light, non-intensive, um, a little bit of extra accessory work. And then if we look at the afternoon session, it's going to be a repeat of the CrossFit Games. I can't remember. This was from last year. Um, I think it's event 9 and 10 or 10 and 11. I'm um, just testing again where my fitness levels are at, see if I can beat my times from last week or two weeks ago. And then in the afternoon, it's going to be some barbell work, or some back squats, and then working a little bit on my weaknesses, which is going to be my handstand push-ups and my pistol squats. So moving on to Tuesday, we're going to go for a nice little 5K run for time every four minutes, 22 touches. Then after that, uh, the afternoon session is going to be some heavy deadlifts, so working on some strength work, and then some explosiveness with the box jumps. Uh, in the afternoon, the very, or sorry, the evening session, 50 cal row for time. This is be a nice quick sprint. I'm gonna rest for probably a few minutes and then we're gonna get into an EMOM. Five bar muscle ups, 10 toes to bar. And the final portion is gonna be a hang clean, squat clean strength section. So moving on to Wednesday, we're looking at survival snatch. Every minute on the minute, starting at 135, I'm gonna snatch it one time. And then after that, we're going to add 10 pounds to each round, and we're going to see what weight I can get up to. And this can be a squat snatch. This can be a power snatch. And then in the afternoon, we're going to look at 50 cal bike, some hang snatches, some burpee box jumpers, dumbbell hang cleans, a nice little pyramid of movements. And we're going to add a 20 pound weight vest. So that's going to be fun to do some very, very intensive movements. Thursday is my rest day, then we're going to do some yoga, some lat releases, some muscle knot releases. And then Friday, again, we're ending on a workout that I did last week. We are retesting, see where I'm at. Added two minutes to, again, get a little bit more in, see how much I can push myself. And then we have a little bit of kettlebell work, not as intensive. This is a much lighter session. And then we're going to hit it hard at the end with a mile run and the five bar muscle ups for time. So this week, we're definitely focusing in on more of a um, strength and gymnastics focus. Um, a lot less endurance based workouts, which we'll probably see the following week. But this week, especially, is gymnastics. So bar muscle ups, pull ups, um, and toes to bar. Um, so thank you guys for tuning in for another episode. I hope you guys enjoy uh, hearing me talk a little bit about my programming, seeing what I'm going to do for this entirety of the week. Um, and again, a lot of this stuff is up for modification. So if there is any nagging injuries or there's something else that I want to work on, so I might go back and I might plug in some pull-ups somewhere, whether it's a strict set um, or some kipping butterfly. But looking back at my programming, I'm pretty satisfied with everything. I do it again in about a week in advance and I may chip in on Wednesday and start up the next week. So between a week and 10 days is how far ahead I plan out. Um, these are always subject for change. Thank you guys for tuning in for another episode. I hope you guys are having a great day. And if you found any value in this at all, or if you're simply just enjoying the comment, leave a like, comment, and subscribe. I'll catch you guys next time.